isn't, isn't it my mess today? Or is it you? Oh, I thought it was me. Ron, I'm sorry. I'm looking. Oh boy. Well then you preach. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, a note for the people who are live streaming at home. The songs that we are using can be found on the website of the parish. The website address is www.btccorl.org. You go to Music Ministry. Well, ministry to begin with, then music ministry, and you will find the songs there. So once again, www.btccorl.org to the link that says ministry, and then to the link that says music ministry, 
and the songs are found there. As we continue the sixth day of our novena to Our Lady of La Salette. So let us stand. We will begin with the song, O Mary, Queen of La Salette, words and music by Father Andre Patno. <clears throat> At last, a let our lady came to leave a message of love to pray, to do penance, and to live the gospel of her son. Oh, Mary, Queen of Lhasa. Tears fall down on us. May we return with grateful hearts to your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord. As Queen of Heaven and of Earth, she wears a Good morning, everyone. Those of you here present, as well of, as those of you who are following us on live stream, we gather today on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. Yesterday we had, of course, the exaltation of the cross, and today we have the Sorrows of Mary. We begin our Eucharist in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table of the Lord, we take a moment to examine our conscience, asking God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your suffering, Mary was compassion and stood at your cross. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your glory, Mary shares in that tremendous grace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who will that when your son was lifted high on the cross, his mother should stand close by and share his suffering, grant that your church, participating with the Virgin Mary in the Passion of Christ, may merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. The word of the Lord. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. For he is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing at the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather today on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, We reflect a bit on what the Gospels share with us concerning sorrow. If you remember right, when the infant Jesus was brought into the temple, Simeon had predicted that he would be a point of contention and a sword would pierce her heart. 
We often think that that sword pierced her heart during Jesus' crucifixion. Well, of course, that is true. But Mary also participated in the sorrows of Jesus during his mission. As we go through the Gospels, we are brought face to face with constant opposition to Jesus' message, to Jesus' understanding of life and of relationship with God. The leadership, both religious and political, of the day were particularly harsh towards Jesus, often threatening him, trying to find some way of tripping him up, and finally, threatening him with death. Mary participated in that sorrow as well. Of course, the great moment of sorrow, if you want, is precisely in the passage that we have just read from the Gospel of St. John. Mary standing at the foot of the cross, on which hangs her son. We, of course, can understand where for a mother this is certainly an extremely painful event to undergo. At that moment, Jesus turns to her and to the beloved disciple who is not named and says to her, here is your son. And to that beloved disciple, here is your mother. The church has always understood this disciple, the beloved disciple, to be anyone who is serious about following Christ. And so, through the years, Mary has been seen precisely as mother of God's people, those redeemed by the blood of Christ. She is intimately linked with that reality, which is why we had the first reading that we did, where the author speaks to us of how a body is composed. Each part of the body is different, but all together they form one body. And this is the understanding of the church. Each has his and her function. But we are all part of that church, the head of which is Christ himself. And Mary is part of that reality as she is part of the church and as she is part of Christ's suffering. What we call compassion, Latin word which means to suffer with, at the foot of the cross, Mary suffers with Jesus. And through the centuries, she suffers compassionately with the church. That is made so very evident in the apparition of Our Lady of La Salette, where the two children saw this globe of light opening up, and there in the midst of which was a lady, her face in her hands, weeping bitterly. Mary crying for her children. That's you and I. That's everyone who's come before us and everyone who will come after us who are baptized as members of Christ's body. Mary stands up and says to the children, How long a time do I suffer for you? Now these words should startle us 
in one way and not startle us in another. Because a mother is always united most intimately with her children. Each and every one of them is precious to her. And we are all precious to the mother of the Lord Jesus, who is our mother. How long a time do I suffer for you? Now, the sad thing in that message is the next words. And you take no heed. You couldn't care less. And then she continues. No matter how much you do, no matter how much you pray, you will never be able to recompense, to make up for, recompense the pains that I have taken for you. That's what we are celebrating today. That mother who stood at the foot of her son's cross, suffering tremendously the pain that only a mother can experience. And so united to us, you and I, that she lets us know, I'm still suffering. This time, I'm suffering for you. I'm part of your lives. I want what's best for you, as my son does. And you need to enter into that reality because you are all part of that body of Christ. And so this morning, my brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table to celebrate the great gift of the Eucharist given to us through the death and suffering of Christ, we want to remember that in our own troubles, in our own problems, in our own challenges in life, we're not alone. And these sufferings, these problems that we encounter can also have a redemptive effect, providing we unite them with the sufferings of Christ. In other words, that the problems we go through, we unite them spiritually with the sufferings of Christ. Mary did that in her sufferings. She continues to do that as she cares for her children many of whom are more than wayward. But they are all her children. Matters not where and where they are at in their lives. What matters is that they are hers, and she cares for them. She cares for you. She cares for me. She cares for everyone we will meet on the street today. Because she knows the price that her son paid for our salvation. And like her son, she doesn't want any of us to be lost. And our indifference is what causes her so much pain, as she reminds us at La Salette. My brothers and sisters, we're celebrating a feast today that should really touch very deeply in our hearts because we are intimately incorporated into this feast. 
We are part of those sorrows. You and I. One hopes that the day will come when we will be part of her joys as well. We bring before the Lord our cares and concerns as expressed in the intentions that we present. That the life and holiness of Mary, the mother of sorrows, may be a sign of hope for all Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians who suffer persecution, especially those who are victims of imprisonment, violence, torture, and death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents who are anxious for their children, especially those children who are suffering or dying, that they may be steadfast in their faith and sure in their love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this memorial of her sorrows, we may do all we can to console our Blessed Mother for all she suffered for our salvation and allow her to be a loving presence in our own sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory and the Burgos, Diaz, and Murillo families for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also want to include, include in our prayers this morning the repose of the soul of Lucille Rampey, who passed away yesterday afternoon. So for that intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also want to pray this morning for Jose Manuel Arenas, who would have celebrated his 25th, and, his 25th birthday today. We want to play, pray for the repose of his soul as well. So we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we bring all these intentions together as we pray the prayer of care and concern that Our Lady expresses on our behalf. O Mary, health of the sick, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. You know what we need, and we are sure you will provide. So that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, leading us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Our song of offering, sing of Mary Reconciler. Sing of Mary Reconciler, radiant queen of Lassalet. Take your place as heavenly mother, interceding that we may find forgiveness in the heart of Christ your Son. Free our hearts from sin and sadness. May His Spirit make us one. Gentle light, O oh weeping mother, Invite us now, draw near. We've forgotten Christ our brother, but you bid us do not fear. If you are converted children, 
famine wheel will be at an end. Pray each day and morn and evening, let your prayers with mine ascend. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands, praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Receive, O merciful God, to the praise of your name, the prayers and sacrificial offerings which we bring to you as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you graciously gave to us as a most devoted mother when she stood by the cross of Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name as we celebrate the sorrows of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and the leaders of your church everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. At the cross her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping Close to Jesus to the last Through her heart his sorrow sharing All his bitter anguish bearing Now at length the sword has passed Body of Christ. Oh, how sad and sore distressed Body of Christ. was that mother highly blessed of, of the soul begotten one. Christ, Christ above in torment hangs, she beneath beholds the pang. Of her dying glorious Son Is there one who would not weep Whelmed in misery so deep Christ, dear Mother, to behold Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain In that mother's pain untold Bruised, derided, cursed, defiled She beheld her tender child All with bloody scourges ran for the sins of his own nation Saw him hang in desolation Till his spirit forth he sent O thou mother font of love Touch my spirit from Take my heart with thine accord Make me feel as thou hast felt Make my soul to glow and melt With the love of Christ my Lord Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her Son, we may complete in ourselves, for the Church's sake, what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Sixth day of the Novena to Our Lady of La Salette. Scripture says, Then the Lord said, 
Go out and stand on the mountain before Yahweh. For at that moment, Yahweh was going by. A mighty hurricane split the mountains and shattered the rocks before Yahweh. But the Lord was not in the hurricane. And after the hurricane, an earthquake. But Yahweh was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a light murmuring sound. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. When the children spoke about their meeting with the beautiful lady, they said, we didn't think about anything. We simply were there. We were listening and absorbing her words as if it were music. In our imagination, we asked the beautiful lady, did the two children respond well to your presence and listen attentively to your message? And Mary said, did you notice how the two children were simply there drinking in my words? They were in tune with the prophetic words I was drawn to share. Some were severe words of warning yet they were honest and direct. As your mother, I was speaking my message directly to the heart of the two children and to your heart as well. It was also important to me to respond to each child personally. When I realized that the two children were having difficulty understanding my initial words, I changed into the local patois for their sake. Also, my questioning of Maximin concerning the event at the Field of Coin was a gentle reminder of his father's deep fear of not being able to provide his family, his wife, and Maximum, his son. This was a troubling expression from his anxious father, and I ensured that Maximum appreciated his father's concerns. Together, Mary, Mother of Reconciliation, in this time of celebration, we rejoice that the Father asked you to carry out his plan of salvation. The Son chose you to be his mother and his first disciple. The Holy Spirit fashioned you into his living temple, our sister in faith. At La Salette, with abundant tears of mercy, you spoke to the two poor children in their own language and urged us to share your message of peace and hope with needy people of every culture and nation. Pray for us to your loving Son that we may draw all your people closer to him. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of La Salette, reconciler of sinners, pray without ceasing for us who have recourse to you. I leave you with two reflection questions. Who has listened well to you in your lifetime? Which people have gotten your full and rapt attention when they spoke to you? Also a reminder, tomorrow evening here at the church, Father Derek from St. John Vianney 
will be giving us a presentation with questions and answers, as you know, on the Catholic teaching on capitalism, socialism, communism, and forming our consciences for faith citizenship. Tomorrow, here in the church at 6.45 p.m. Hope to see you all here and have a wonderful day. We conclude with a song, The Weeping Mother. Uh, it will be sung to the tune of Amazing Grace. <clears throat> In tears our lady showed herself that day at La Salette and begged that court was made to amends with penance and Come.